Welcome to Crafts and Minis. You're either watching this because you love monsters or you're about to love monsters. Kaywood Publishing has done it again, following up their first monster book, Monsters of Feyland, which I did a review on, which you can find a link to uh, that review in the description below. We've got Monsters of the Underworld. They've taken that concept, like so many great monster books are based on, of going to a different location and finding out all the deadliness that it contains. I'm showing you this because I back both these books on Kickstarter and I'm not being paid at all for these reviews. Andrew Kaywood, Travis Hansen, Jeff Porter have done it again. They're an amazing team that brings great writing, great art, great layout together to give you a very usable book. The reason that I'm doing these reviews on my channel is because I think they're usable and I'm a very simple DM. I want something that I don't have to like spend hours and hours pouring myself uh, into right to try to study. I want something that I can take from page to table very quickly. And if I can use some minis to represent monsters even better. And that's what you get in this book. You don't have a ton of fluff. You get some very specific guidance that's very brief. And then you get into the meat of the monsters. Look at this art, right? So awesome. So cohesive too. look at the layout. One monster per page. Very clear stats, very clear descriptions, very clear abilities. And then you get these monsters that are very usable, like an animated statue. Animated statues not only are in the underworld, but they can be anywhere. And you already have a mini to represent them. Anything that fits on a two-inch base could be painted up like an animated statue. You have the mini. You just don't know it yet. Behemoths. Now, this monster book has challenge ratings all over the place. Just like any great monster book, there's a lot of variety. But... I got to be honest, when I see a monster that's challenge rating 30, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to use that. I've never had a campaign go to like level 20 or something with the characters. And so when I see a monster like that, I'm not going to use it. Another reason I get scared off by monsters that are that high is because they have too many abilities. They're like these mega uh, baddies that, you know, just soak up all my attention as the DM uh, to like, even in preparation, because I don't know what they do. And I've got to spend all this time learning what they do over and over again to make sure that it's fun for the players. Well, this guy takes a different direction. Not that he's not well thought out or anything like that. He's just very clear, very straightforward. The behemoth is kind of like the character of the juggernaut in Marvel Comics. It's not going to be stopped. If you're hiding in something, it's going to get destroyed. If you're hiding behind something, it's going to get destroyed. If you are something, you're going to get destroyed, right? And so the behemoth is a great thing, even though it's challenge rating 30 and my players maybe couldn't go straight up against it anytime soon, they could deal with the aftermath of behemoth running through the underdark or a whole city collapsing because a behemoth took out all the structures beneath. Or maybe, maybe someone's threatening to summon it. And like any good D&D monster, that is worth fighting. You either want to stop that or you want it to be summoned so you can get the AXP. <laughs> now, another cool thing in here is you're going to get twists on other monsters um, that you're now going to find in the underworld. And they do all the hard lifting for you to make the twist happen, like the cave Hydra. You wouldn't expect a Hydra in the underworld, but now you got one and it works. I also wanted to just show you. They've got these cool new creatures like the Deep Guide. The Deep Guide's a fake creature that knows the underworld like the back of his hand. But if it feels threatened, it's a survivor. It'll leave your folks. And already just little, little nuggets like that are where good story arcs come from or where good encounters come from. Now, this is what I think is cool. This is how I would link this book with Monsters of Feyland. The Deep Guide can bring monsters maybe from the underworld to the Feyland or Feyland to the underworld, or maybe your whole party needs to go from one to the other and you got to find the deep guide to do it. I also want to just point out these demon frogs, demon snails, demon spider, right? How cool is that? The art's consistent, the color's consistent and very easy to represent on the tabletop. Just look at how beautiful this book is. Now, if you're into dragons, that's one thing. You only got three dragons, but <laughs> dragons are not hard to find. What is hard, though, about dragons is finding new concepts. And, of course, Lava Dragon, Spore Dragon are new concepts worth looking at. You're going to see, of course, this theme of spores across the underworld, as you might expect, because of the fungus that exists. And I love that about this. Now, you're also going to get 
monsters in here that you would expect like driders. Now this is an elite drider over here, which is awesome, but you're also gonna get the Dorgar. And I love that in Kwood Publishing's monster books, if you get a common monster type, you're gonna get a lot of little twists and variants on it, which I love that. The dwarves are one of those monster types that you're gonna get some different variants on. And even this, I love, this is great, the Dwarvon, which is this construct that the dwarves have, and it's a huge construct, right? So that's a monster mini, which I love, but maybe some have been stolen. And now the Dwargar have them, or do they? Did the dwarves still control them? I don't know, it's just so fun. But if you're into dwarves, you need this book because you're getting all sorts of different types of dwarves especially the infected. The infected, of course, is that theme I mentioned, like the spores, the spores infect things um, that then you can carry over through all sorts of different races and monster types in your game. And I love this description of the civil war, that the dwarves are fighting a civil war among the dwarves that aren't infected and the ones that are infected. Because I think I remember Joss Whedon like based Firefly off of a book about the civil war in the United States. And so something like that, a civil war among the dwarves, can just get you thinking of all sorts of cool potential. And look at all these. I think there's like at least eight dwarves of different types in here. And then you get the drow. Of course, you get the drow infected. <laughs> look at that art. I love it. And you're going to get all sorts of different drow that are awesome. And you're going to get, of course, your drow spider riders. And then you're going to get the funga. Now, the funga have different types. And you'd expect that, like the fungi worm. That's so cool. But that's what you're going to get from this book are all sorts of awesome different types of monsters that just fit, but that you could, of course, use in other settings too, like the cave giant could very easily be found in an area that's not the underworld. And I love that you get in multiple giants. I think there's at least like six giants, which is great. The gloom shroom. That's so fun. And then you're going to get the Shvivneblin. Yep. <laughs> the deep gnomes. And so you're going to get them. You also have a character, the Goblin Queen. So you can take your goblins from Monster of Feyland and now stick them under her rule in the underworld, which is awesome, awesome. And there are just so many cool monsters in here. I'm going kind of quick, but that's just to give you a sense of it. Minotaurs. Minotaurs you get a few of, which I love. That's so cool. An armored minotaur. That would be an awesome mini I'm going to have to find. And then you got the Monster Hunter himself. So maybe your characters come across the guy who's been cataloging all these monsters, which is so fun. You got your necromancer, so you get your undead in here. A nightmare bear. Okay, this guy. <laughs> so fun, right? Flying ogres. One of my favorite characters from Monster of Feyland was the Ogre King. Not only because Reaper Miniatures puts out a mini that would work perfect for it, but now because I can give him new minions, these flying ogres. And they're just, you know, dropping boulders. No big whoop. <laughs> It's awesome. Also, you get some orc bat riders and you get a whole bunch of different orcs, as you'd expect, an infected orc and all these other orcs, right? Which is always fun. Now, is this the first monster book that has orcs in it? No, but there's these little twists that are so fun. I love that rock worm, by the way. Oh, so good. And then like these shades. Or, or they're, sorry, the shadows, the shadow knight and the lord and the spider. So cool. Be easy to paint up. And then you got your spore farmer. Now, he's only challenge rating one, but he's going around carrying these dark spores in a sack on his belt. And, uh, oh, all this infections are happening, huh? And that's the type of stuff you need to have uh, story potential from a monster book. Because he doesn't do all the hard lifting for you, but he gives you the nuggets Andrew does in his writing to give you some great ideas. Armored trolls. I love it. Oh, and of course you need a big bad, but I'm not going to spoil that. Underworld everything. I love the drow vampire, by the way. So good. Oh, have we seen zombie giants before? Oh, is maybe a mini of a zombie giant coming out from Reaper soon in their bones line? And now you got rules for it for D&D? &D? How about that? And of course you get your beasts. And there's all sorts of cool beasts. Right? I love that. Germ worms. Yes. So good. Oh, yeah. The Vok. I think that's what uh, the Monster Hunter rides around on, which is so cool. You get your monsters by type and CR. 
in a table. And then you get these tables um, that are new for this book that weren't in the other book, plus some maps, which is kind of cool. Now, is that a ton of extra tables and maps? No. Is it just enough? Yes. And I got to tell you, this book has uh, improved on the stuff that they could improve on from Monsters of Feyland. Both of these, though, are amazing books. And when I say improved, I mean it didn't go crazy. You're getting Duergar, Dwarves, Drow, Fungus, Deep Gnomes, Minotaurs, Orcs, and a bunch of other awesome-looking creatures that are all super usable in your game. So if you're into straightforward rules, great little nuggets of ideas, awesome art and layout, and monsters that have coherency both on the table and in the rules that they complement each other, this is the book for you. So well done, Andrew, Travis, and Jeff. Kaywood Publishing has done it again. Do not hesitate to go find this. I love the hardback version, but I know it comes in PDF as well. And I really encourage you, go get after your hobby and do so with some awesome monsters.